Assalamu alaikum, my SSTV students at home. Uh, we are here this morning to take uh, a revision on faceless by Amadaku. To take what? A revision on faceless by Amadaku. Uh, this revision become necessary. Faceless. Being one of the uh, texts we have studied, bulky as it is, and uh, complicated, uh, uh, and uh, uh, complicated as the story might be, we have done a lot about this uh, text before. But I deem it necessary again for us to run through the entire text and I segment them into five. One, we are going to take care of the background of the novel in brevity. We are to take care of the background of the novel too. We are to move into what we call the plot summary. Then number five, four, we take care of the themes. And five, we are to take care of the uh, characters. Going to number one, background of the novelist. Amadako was born in Koforitao, Ghana. That could be up in Accra. She studied in Kumasi, where she received her diploma in 1980. She published, apart from Faceless, Beyond the Horizon in 1995, Faceless and Housemaid in 19. 98. So, going into the background of the novel, the novel centers on what we call streetism. Streetism in Ghana. When you say streetism, Ghana, as of this time, was facing a big problem around what parents or how parents are unable to take care of their children. You know, after independence, all the African countries, Ghana, Nigeria, Senegal, and uh, others, we were facing different problems. While in Nigeria, our own problem was corruption from here and here, military uh, 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 intervention in uh, politics and what have you, Ghana's major problem, apart from military intervention, was what? Was how parents are failing their responsibilities, which led to what we call streetism. And streetism, on this note, means or centers on how children of 11 years, between 10 to 14 years, are not at home with their parents. Rather, they are scattered all over the places, walking on the streets. On the streets, committing abominations, moving into prostitutions, alcoholism, and involving in other social vices that you may think of. So, Amadako has pains in breaking this story to the entire world. How Ghana was unable to take care of this problem of parental irresponsibility and uh, at the same time facing the problem on how to cope with the social menace resulting from this streetism. So, as he recounted in the novel, the Fofo and Baby T, the two young girls, once the entire story revolves around, 
from the accounts of Fofo, we made to understand in chapter one that streetism is not all about Fofo himself and the baby T, her sister. Rather, it's about their age mates. That is the account she gave even to the mute authority, the NGO, headed by Cabria. Streetism in Ghana is not set as around how do I call baby T alone, neither Fofo the sister. But the account or the story of Fofo revealed to us that streetism is very common, that most of their age mates, one way or the other, are on the streets. So that is what Amadako come to paint, paint to us. The pictorial evidence of what Ghana were as of this time and the social vices that followed and the implication on the note of individuals and that of government and even the parents was the picture we get in this novel, Faceless. Then, the plot summary. The plot summary is all about the death of who? Of baby T. Baby T. Baby T is Fofo's sister. And this girl was killed, murdered, and laid down on the street helplessly. And what happened? Attention of police was drawn to this, to the death of this girl, but nothing happened. From here to here, police reluctantly, unwillingly, Came about saying this and that, and they could not get the reason or who were behind the death of this uh, little girl, Baby T. But with the help of Fofo, the sister, Fofo, who herself was a street girl, okay? From her revelation, from her revelation and uh, revelation and that effort of mute, an effort, effort of mute, an NGO, NGO headed by Cabria, headed by Cabria, we got to unearth what led to the death of her baby T. And this was revealed skillfully by her sister Fofo, who gave account on how life were with them at home. It was through Fofo that we got to know, and Milt gets to know too, that Baby T left home because of the maltreatment of who? Of their mother's lover because from her revelation having given birth to them their own father left them and followed another followed another man then with their mother not able to unable to take care of them took in another lover in the person of uh papu and co and the same lovers of the mothers who, one way or the other, tries or, one way or the other, raped the Fofo and Baby T. So, this made the situation to become unbearable for the two girls and the left home. Then, apart from that, there are other revelations from Fofo 2 in chapter 1, telling us about her dreams 
and other two lads telling us about their dreams, that their dream one day is to do what? Is to sit down, is to sit down at the same table with their mother, a person they'll call this my own mother. That is the dream they were having. When they were granted interview, telling you that streetism was a common phenomenon in Ghana as of this time. So, it was this that led Amadako to put the novel together. So, when you move into the entire text, what are the themes? The first one is what? Child abuse. Almost every child in Ghana was abused as of this time. One, their parents unable to, to cater for them, chase them out, to even look for money, to collect money, to do prostitution, to give them money. So, that one way or the other is child abuse. And some uncles in the family, like uncle, the papa, the poison, that are old enough, uncle enough, father enough, were betraying this children one way or the other by making love to them. So, that now form basis for what we call what? Child abuse. Primarily, like I said earlier, it's not all about baby tea and fofo alone. Other children are there. So, you can set her your story around child abuse, around fofo, baby tea, then, and every other uh, girls in the street. Number two, you have parental irresponsibility. What does this mean? Parents in Ghana, as of this time, become irresponsible. They run away from their responsibility in taking care of their children. And that is why those children do run to the street. At the age of 10, 9, 11, they are already in the street, parading from morning to night, not knowing where to spend the next night. Either sleeping here today or this night, the other night they don't know where that will be. And that is where a lot of things happen to them. That is where rape are being, you know, that is where they are being raped on daily basis. So parental irresponsibility is seen in the mothers, in the fathers, the father of who, of baby T and Fofo, the father of who, even the Paco, the father of who, the poison, the father of who, the father of almost all of them, the goose. So I, I, the same way the girls are into the streets, the same way the boys are into the streets because the Paco we are talking about and the goose. Papo, then goes and even poison. They all took to the streets at tender age as a result of what? Parental irresponsibility. Then number three, streetism. That has been addressed earlier. It's all about what Ghana wear at this time. It's all about children being on the street for what? Prostitution. Being on the street for what? For social vices. Being on the street for what? For partying, alcoholism. Being on the street for what? Aimlessly. Doing what? Without guidance. That's what this is all about. So incest is all about a relative taking on a relative for sex. Uncle. Who is an uncle? To what? To who? To Fofo. Because Fofo uh, decided at a point to reveal to him what happened to her. The next thing he was trying to take, he tried to take advantage of this girl. So, all this I want to put together to be what? To be incest. And the event that led to Nayomo to cause what we call, no, to cause who? To cause the uncle we're talking about. Uncle was caused by Naomi. 
On the note of what? On the note of taking advantage of Fufu. So, we have police inefficiency. You know, police inefficiency everywhere in Africa. Ghana, as of this time, this time I don't know, but as of the time this text was written, police were not effective in dealing with issues before them, in dealing with issues of social vices, in dealing with issues of crime in Ghana as of this time. And what revealed this to us was when the death of Baby T was reported, the police was reluctant. One, they will not have fuel. Two, their car refused to take off. Okay, they have to service the car here and there. And again, looking from their expressions, then you get to see how reluctant they were and how unwilling they were to discharge their duty. So that is what we refer to as police inefficiency. This and other things are there in the poem that you are to take care of. Then the next thing is character radiation. We have many characters in this poem. Baby T, Fofo, Paco, Cabria, Uncle, we have Goose, we have all of them, we have Nayombo. Mention them. What you do for us is to skillfully from what we have done before. Individually, take each of these characters, know a little about them. You talk of Baby T. This is the girl that was killed, the body at a Google market. Okay, the body mutilated. And the person that at the same time led the NGO the one we call Milt, led by Cabria. <laughs> led by Cabria to do what? To unearth what actually caused the death of Baby T. And her life, as revealed by the sister Fofo, how tender age she left home, and the maltreatment from the mother, and the lovers of the mother, all those things were revealed by what? Fofo, the sister. And followed by Fofo, that I was talking about just now, Fofo, a sister to Baby T, a younger sister to Baby T, and Post was very important in the development of the entire novel because from her we learned the background of Baby T. From her we learned what actually was the problem with their mother and the father. With her we learned what was their mother doing as of uh, uh, the time their own father left her. Then from her at the same time, we get to know much more about uh, uncle, uh, papo, and what have you. Then getting to number three, the papo herself, a street lord. This guy and poison, they were referred to as what? Street lords causing fears, causing mayhem to all these girls. On seeing them, it's enough for them to start running. So get to know more about them a little. And Cabria, the one we call Almighty Cabria, a woman. And to some extent, Cabria, as an NGO person, as a woman too, and coming from Ghana, we have interest in this character, Cabria. Because the same Ghana that girls were on the street, Cabria were sticking to her own what? Children at home, taking care of them. So we have interest in Cabria. Take care of her roles. Being an NGO person and how she was able to dig out the cost of the death of her baby T. And other persons she recruited along. Then uncle. The person that betrayed what? That betrayed Fofo because she confided in him. So get to know one or two things about these characters. And that is all. So this is what we have on the note of uh, this revision. And I uh, wish you all the best. This assignment, I term them reading assignment. 
explore the role of Cabria. And that's what I was saying earlier. That we have interest in this character being a woman and the role she played in the entire text. Then number two, account for the death of what? Baby T. Very interesting. Because the entire text revolves around this character, Baby T. Because from her, you get to know what actually that streetism we're talking about is all about. From her, you get to know how parents have actually failed their responsibility in Ghana as of this time. Then, number three, discuss the biblical allusion in the novel. The biblical allusion in the novel is traced to what we call Sodom and Gomorrah. So, be reminded, take care of this. And uh, little you may add to this, you will not have problem on this text. Thank you so much. Have a nice